things come and go in Destiny. This includes metas and exotics and even supers sometimes that just don't see the light of day because they're just not good. You've already looked at the thumbnail, so you know today we're going to be talking about Geomag Stabilizers and Chaos Reach. Now, back in the day when this came out, this was the thing to use inside of PvP and PvE, but... It was dealt with, nerfed, all that unfortunate stuff. But with changes made recently, it is back on top and quite frankly, one of the best feeling supers on our Warlock. So today we're going to be looking at that and talking about it. But of course, like, comment, and subscribe as we are insanely close to the 1,000 subscriber goal. So please subscribe as that's going to help me out a ton. And of course, let's have a quick word from our... And you can obviously tell by the thumbnail of the Exonic we're going to be looking at today is Geomag Stabilizers, which comes with the trait close enough. Damaging targets with Chaos Reach extends its duration. Collecting Ionic Traces grants you energy for Chaos Reach. This particular exotic has had a bunch of changes made to it to make it feel better than what it used to. When this first came out in Forsaken, you could sprint to top off the last little bit of your super, which people abused in PvP. Then for a while, it was kind of left alone, and no one really used it due to the super chaos reach itself not being as great. But that changed very recently, where now it is very good due to it causing jolting lightning strikes when you deal sustained damage. This then leads us to our current version of this exotic. This exotic refunds 10% of super energy every 0.75 seconds one we deal damage with Chaos Reach. With the now added benefit of getting 2% of our energy back when we pick up an Ionic Trace. Now that may not seem like a lot, but when you're generating a constant flow of Ionic Traces, you get your super back very, very quickly quickly. As for weapons, there are a bunch of different things we can use with this particular build that can make Ionic Traces, but I'm going to be using Delicate Tomb. This exotic arc fusion rifle comes with the trait Traitor's Vessel. Fire a wide horizontal spread when shot from the hip. Final blows with this weapon have a chance to generate Ionic Traces. Powerful foes and opposing guardians always generate Ionic Traces. This will allow us to make Ionic Traces from our weapon without needing to completely rely on a fragment from our subclass. It also has the trait Tempest Cascade. Collecting an Ionic Trace overcharges this weapon's next shot, jolting targets on hit. We're making a ton of Ionic Traces with this weapon, so we will almost always have that jolting shot. In turn, we will make more Ionic Traces, and will also play very heavily into the catalyst, Ionic Interment. Collecting an Ionic Trace partially reloads the magazine from reserves. This will make it so we will never have to reload this weapon while we are in combat, because we are going to be constantly generating Ionic Traces from many different things, including our subclass which is going to start with Electrostatic Mind. Defeating targets with arc abilities or defeating a jolted or blinding target creates an Ionic Trace. Collecting an Ionic Trace makes you amplify. This aspect is very helpful in two parts of this build. First, being all the ways we can generate Ionic Traces, whether that be from abilities or defeating a jolted or blinded target, which we will do very, very frequently. Secondly, is becoming easily amplified just by collecting an Ionic Trace, which again is very helpful, as amplified gives us good bonuses to weapon handling and speed, and it's going to play a huge part in our fragments as well as our next aspect, Arc Soul. Cast your Rift to create create an arc soul that fires at targets in front of you. Allies can pass through your rift to get an arc soul. Your rift charges faster when allies are near. And while you are amplified, your arc souls are supercharged and gain increased fire rate. Arc souls are amazing, not just for this build, but for any arc warlock build and any content. And they count as an ability. So we can get the ionic traces from electrostatic mime just about every single time our arc soul gets a defeat. Plus, while we are amplified, they're going to be putting in more work with the increase to their fire rate. We're also going to get our rift back faster while near allies, and we can make it faster with our first fragment, Spark of Focus. After sprinting for a short time, your class ability regeneration is increased with a minus 10 to our recovery. With this, while we're sprinting around from location to location in a strike, or even just sprinting away from targets, we're going to be getting a decent amount of regeneration towards our rift, which we can then place down get our Arc Souls, and then just have us and our teammates just do work with the Arc Souls. And of course, while you're near your allies while sprinting, this is going to double down with that effect. And with more Rifts, we can get more Ionic Traces from Arc Souls. We can also get more Ionic Traces from Spark of 
Discharge. Arc Weapon Final Blows have a chance to create an Ionic Trace with a minus 10 to strength. I know we have the chance to make Ionic Traces naturally from Delicate Tomb, but this fragment is essentially going to double our chances for Ionic Traces and will allow our Heavy Weapon to make them if you're running an Arc Weapon. We're also going to take Spark of Amplitude. Rapidly defeating targets while you are amplified creates an Orb of Power. We're going to be amplified constantly, so we're going to be making a ton of orbs as this counts as any rapid defeat, whether that be from abilities or weapons or even defeating jolted targets. This is very helpful as we want our super back as fast as possible and all the orbs we make in combination with the Ionic Traces means we're going to get it back even faster. Finally, we have Spark of Beacons. While you are amplified, your arc special weapon blows create a blinding explosion. Again, we're going to be amplified constantly from making Ionic Traces, meaning Delicate Tomb is now going to blind targets and in any content, blinding is a huge help against a group of ads and we're also going to be making more ionic traces from defeating these blinded targets from electrostatic mind as for our artifact we're gonna start with diviner's discount this makes all scavenger mods much cheaper and considering you're using a special ammo weapon this is going to come in handy Elemental Orbs Arc, so we can spread around some extra Jolt. Elemental Fury, so our abilities and orbs do more damage to stun champions. Communal Pickup, so we get bonus weapon damage when someone else picks up our Arc Orb. Refreshing Pickups, so when we pick up one of these orbs, we get ability energy back to our lowest charged ability. Monochromatic Maestro, so we can get bonus ability and weapon damage. And Frenzied Stacks, so when we do have stacks of armor charge, our elemental orbs are going to do more damage. And speaking of armor charge, starting with our helmet, we're going to have harmonic siphon, so our arc weapons can make orbs, special ammo finder, so we will have plenty of ammo for delicate tomb, and font of wisdom to give us a plus 30 to our intellect when we do have stacks of armor charge. For arms, we have firepower to make orbs from our grenades, font of focus, so we can get a plus 30 to our discipline when we have a stack of armor charge, on our chest, we have charged up for extra stacks of armor charge, and then our resist or reserve mods, depending on what you want to run. On legs, I have harmonic scavenger, so all our arc weapons get extra ammo from their respective ammo bricks. Elemental charge, so our ionic traces can give us stacks of armor charge, and a single stack of arc weapon surge, just for that little extra damage that does stack with monochromatic maestro. On our bond, we have time dilation, so all our decaying armor charge mods last longer and powerful attractor to pull nearby orbs to us and i also ran a bomber mod just to help out with our grenade as i really like arc grenades as a whole on all three classes they're all very good for stats definitely prioritize intellect for your super and recovery for your rifts for your arc souls with all that being said, when it comes to your armor mods, if you have a good stats and you don't want to use these particular font mods, you don't have to. You can run things like Ashes to Asset, Hands On, stuff like that to help you get your super back faster. My stats on my Arc Warlock are abysmal, so I use these to help me get that little extra oomph. If your stats are good, do not worry about them. You can find easy replacements for them. Now, with all that being said, this build is a ton of fun and it is super good and high-end content. Between the fact that Chaos Reach just puts out that extra little bit of single target damage with its jolting lightning strikes, and you can then do it for essentially what is double the time with Geomag Stabilizers, it's very nice to see this particular exotic and super combo come back from the, essentially the dead, as it is just a really nice combo to use, and it's always been a personal favorite of mine, so it's really nice to see. But that is the end of our particular video, so please like, comment, and please subscribe. Again, we are so, so close to our goal of a 1,000 subscribers that it's not even funny. So with that, I will see you guys in the next video.